Good morning again. I have been preaching the last six Sabbaths, I guess, and today I'm going to have my little break. I love to preach. But uh, last Sabbath, we, I introduced to you and I mentioned to you, actually, that we are going to have two students that are coming from Washington University, and they are going to be the internship in doing internship in our church. And today, I'm going to invite Pastor Justino. He's going to be the speaker for us this morning. So his family is here, Laurinda, uh, Joshua, Ruth. They are here with us. They are from New Jersey, and also Pastor Orlando Hooker is from, he used to be a pastor in New Jersey, he's visiting us today. Welcome, Pastor. So, before praying, he gave the time for Justino, I call him Volvo, so I met him when he was nine years old, and uh, I have been putting up with you for nine, for 11 years. <laughs> so anyway, so now I moved to this church, and now he's in Washington University. Man, glad to have you here. So I baptized him when he was 10, some, something like that. So anyway, he's still in the church. It's a good thing, you know. So, But he's starting to be a pastor, and uh, he's going to help us here with whatever area we are going to help him and coach him and mentor him. I was thinking, I was talking to my wife yesterday, you know, that uh, I am 21 years in ministry, you know, and uh, I have my degrees, I have been working churches in conference, and now everything that I have here I'm going to download to this boy mind, you know, so it's like, that means that f when to start working five years later, you have to be way better than the pastors that mentored you. That's what it is. That's how it works. You are going to have the opportunity to interact with different leaders of the church. Pastor Jerry, he works in GC. Also, he's going to download something in your, your brain. So this is our job as a church to mentor the younger generation. And uh, glad that you can do that. So let's have a word of prayer, and the time is yours. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give it to us to serve you. And we come today, and you know each one of us, you know our hearts, our minds. You know, Father, that maybe for some of us it was a great week, maybe for some of us it was not that good. Whatever the situation that is troubling our hearts, might be health, might be financial, credit cards piling up, the car that's broken, whatever it is out there, Give us the peace and the assurance in our mind that you are in control of everything. Amen. And today, as we continue to worship your name, I pray that you can use Volvo, that your Holy Spirit can be in his mind, in his heart, in the message that he's going to share with us today. Help us to get closer to you. Amen. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your church and get together in fellowship with one another and worship your great name. You stay with us as we continue uh, this day that belongs to you, that we can feel your presence and your direction in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. You can try that again. Happy Sabbath, church. Um, for your information, I've been dealing with Pastor Masena for the past few years. Um, He's been getting under my skin, so I kind of had to put him in line. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I think some thanksgivings are due because, first and foremost, I want to thank God for the opportunity he's allowed me to not only preach his word, but to be here with each and every one of you. You guys have a beautiful church. You guys have beautiful leadership that every day they come here and they pray early in the morning or whenever they can, and they try and they try to seek new ways in which they can bring God not only to you, but to this church. Um, when my girlfriend and I arrived here this morning. We were escorted here in a golf cart. <laughs> I did not know you guys do that. You guys. <laughs> and, and I want to say I already feel at home with you guys. Amen. And I want to thank my parents for coming all the way here. We are from Newark, New Jersey. 
Um, my pastor, my son, has said our church is Luso, Brazil in North New Jersey. And my parents drove all the way here just to see me not only be introduced, but to see me preach. I want to thank my brother-in-law and my sister for being here. Uh, they live about 30, 40 minutes from here, so honestly, it wasn't really that big of a drive. <laughs> and <laughs> I want to thank my girlfriend as well for accompanying me everywhere I go. She's always there preaching, always making sure that my sermons are good. And if they're bad, she will let me know. Amen. <laughs> and ultimately, I want to thank my parents as well because two years ago before I arrived at Washington Events University, um, we received a letter because I was in a community college in Essex County. And we received a letter from the university and they said, uh, we accepted you into the fall semester of 2017 and we were very ecstatic, we were happy and we were excited, but I guess um, the truth set in that we did not have a lot of money to pay for the university. And through a lot of prayer, and trust me, there was a lot of fasting. I remember there was one day my mother and I went to Washington Adventist, and we did not eat since 6 o'clock in the morning. And we stayed there until 6 p.m. And ultimately, God gave us the okay because he allowed me to get enough scholarships and enough funds to the point that I was allowed to study at the university. Amen. So I want to thank God for that opportunity because a lot of times what we do not do is we do not appreciate God's character and all the goodness and all the things that he's doing for our lives. Amen. And to get into the, to the bread of the sermon, today is Creation Sabbath. So our World SDA Church is essentially celebrating this day, which is called Creation Sabbath. Can you say that with me? Creation, creation Sabbath. And today is a very important day because not only are we celebrating the Sabbath day, but we're just thanking God for creating us. Amen. Amen. So, so if you can, please follow me into a word of prayer and let's break down the message today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in, in all your goodness and all your kindness, God, you still allow us to, to, to mess up so we can see your glory, God. Lord, Lord, we are grateful because your word, as Jeremiah says, there are times that I don't want to speak about you, but your word is burning in my heart, God. There are times that I don't want to listen to anything that you have to tell me, but your word is burning in my heart, God. And for some of us here, we come today with this burden that everywhere we go, we cannot forget about you, God. And, and, and it may be funny to call it a burden, Lord, but because some of us do not want to continue to carry your word because we know about the risk and we know about the dangers, Lord God. But I, I come here to Ellicott City SDA Church to revive their faith in a God who is so good that it does not matter if we suffer for you because it is good that we suffer for you, God. Lord, allow your word to be rooted in our souls, Lord God, in the depths of our souls, Lord. So everywhere we go, people do not see human beings, but they see you. Lord, Lord, our, our prayer this morning is that we are not ourselves anymore, but we die because you died for us on a cross, Lord. We want to be with you on the cross, and we also want to resurrect with you, God. Allow us today, Lord, to dive into your word and to break down everything, Lord God, and to, and to tear down any biases, any things we have against you, Lord. And we want to understand why we were created. Thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath day. In your name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. God is good. Amen. I always got to start my sermon with that. God is good. So essentially, in creation Sabbath, and what I wanted to talk about today, if you can, please turn your Bibles to Genesis 1. And as you are there, you will find something important. And it says, in the beginning... God. And it's interesting because in John chapter 1, verse 1, in Greek it says, in arche and hologos, which essentially means in the beginning was the word. But what's interesting about this is the way John describes the word is he's not describing it as in the beginning God was created. He was essentially saying existence found God already. Does that, does that make sense? Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but that kind of blows my mind that it, it, existence found God, not God found existence. Does that make sense? So your God has always been there, and your God is eternal. That's essentially what John is saying. But John walked with God, and in his time with God, he was noticing something about Jesus Christ. And what he noticed was Jesus Christ's actions do not differentiate from his words. If Jesus says he is something, he does it. And if he says he will do something, he ultimately does it. So what John decided to call Jesus is I'm going to call him the word. Does that make sense? He said because I can't, I, I, I can't see a difference. The only thing I see is, is it's equal. When God says I will cure the sick, he does it. Uh, when, when he says, I will come to your house and I will bless your house, he does it. When he says, I will multiply the days of your youth, he does it. 
And John says, there's no reason for me to keep calling him Christ because we already know him as Jesus. The Christ, essentially, I'm going to just call him the Word. And what John was saying is that in the beginning, the Word was with God. And I, I want to kind of give you depth. I want to give you understanding before we go into Genesis chapter 1. Because God was not the only, the Father was not the only person there in creation. The Word says that in the beginning was the Word. And he was essentially saying when God said in the beginning, let there be light, we understand Jesus Christ is the light of the world. So God was not only saying let there be light into a dark world, he was introducing Jesus Christ. Is this this all making sense now? So in the beginning was not just God by himself. In the beginning was Christ with God, and all things were made through Christ as well as with God. Does that make sense? So I want you to understand that the Jesus you are serving in the beginning, in the beginning, has always been there, and he will continue to be there. Does this make sense? So in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was God, and and God said, let there be light. And then we're going to kind of zoom through, we're going to kind of zoom through creation. Is is that okay? I don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to put you guys to sleep. So I'm going to kind of give you a, I'm going to kind of give you, um, how how do you say this word? I'm going to give you pretty much a summary of how creation went. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? So God creates waters, God creates trees, God creates animals, he creates all these things, and he's speaking these things into existence. Day by day by day by day, God is speaking things into existence, and what is important about this is because I want you to understand your God is powerful. When he says something will be done, it will be done. So God, on the sixth day, something different happened. He looked at Christ, and he looked at the Spirit, and he says, let's do something different. Let's create man into our image. And I'm sure the Godhead was kind of confused and was like, what is man? Father, what, what is man? And God's like, I don't even know, but we're going to try something new. And then God gets in the dirt, and then he's putting all these things together, and instead of him speaking, now he's getting closer to mankind. Now he's getting a one-on-one connection with him. Now he's starting to put things together with his own hands, and now he's saying... They look like us. Oh, they sound like us. Matter of fact, not only that, but the light that's in them is me. And and I'm going to call them mankind. And and I'm going to call them my own. And then essentially what began to happen after that was that God created them on the sixth day. And here's my my struggle with creation. And I don't want you guys to think that I have a problem with God the way God did creation because essentially the reason why I have an issue or the reason why I believe Adam and Eve sinned was because they did not know God. They did not know his power. Does this make sense? If I'm God, why would I create Adam and Eve on the sixth day when I could have created them in the beginning so they could see my works throughout the week? If I'm God, why would I create Adam and Eve one day and the next day tell them we're going to celebrate my day? Because if I'm God, I'm telling Adam and Eve, I'm creating you since the beginning so you can see what I'm capable of. So when I tell you do not eat from this tree, I want you to believe in me so you will not have this, uh, this idea that God is not who he says he is. And essentially the problem with why we sin is because we do not know the character of God. Some of us do not know who God is. So in Adam and Eve in creation, they ate the apple or the fruit. Might be an apple, might be an orange, whatever your preference is for fruits. They ate it, and now they're in something called sin. And and sin is introduced in a perfect place. Some of you guys understand, or, or some of you guys have this belief that sin or something bad cannot enter into a holy place. But sin was amongst perfection. And I'm not coming here to discourage you. I just want you to kind of see the perfect picture that that regardless of how bad it was in creation, God made it so that he can rescue us. Does this make sense? So in in all things, when all these things were going bad and and creation was going bad, it came to this point that now we're, we're hundreds and maybe even thousands of years into time. And now man is doing things that man should not be doing. Man is lying around with man. Woman is lying around with woman. From the beginning of creation where God wanted it to be one way, now it's a complete other way. God is like, I need to help them. And I need for them to have a way out. So God decides, now we're in Exodus. Does this make sense? So we're kind of zooming here. Is this okay with you guys? Uh, are, are you guys okay with this? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
So now we're in Exodus, and uh, Exodus 20 is when Moses, uh, he, he went on top of a mountain, and he went to go talk with God, and God is like, this is exactly what I want you to say to the people. And he begins, he begins in Exodus 20. He says, he says, I am the Lord your God who freed you from Egypt. And what God is trying to do here, which is essentially what I think God is trying to do in each and every one of our lives, is God is trying to remind us where he brought us from. Some of us have been in places probably a little worse than what Egypt was going on at the time. They were slaves for 400 plus years, and God was essentially talking about the Ten Commandments, saying the reason I want you to follow these things was so you can remember me. And then he goes on to this specific commandment. And, and, and this commandment was so detailed because now it's not just talking about what he wants them to do, but now it's him talking about what I want you to remember from me. And then God says, on the seventh day, I, I don't want you to do anything. I, I don't want you to work. I, I don't want you to worry about your family. Matter of fact, I, I don't even want you to, to, to speak against anything, any bad thing. I don't want you to gossip. I don't want you to do any of these things. I, I, I barely even want you to sin, but it, it, you're going to sin because you're a human being. God is like, on this day, I want you to focus on me. God's like, I want you to focus on me. And then he starts describing it. And he says, because in six days I created the heaven and the earth. And then in six days I put animals here. And in six days I created you with my own hands. And God is doing something intricate. God is reminding them to remember what he has done. The Greek word for resting just means to have an intermission from your labor. Some of us have, have no peace in our hearts. Some of us have, have no freedom inside. Some of us do not enjoy the Sabbath day or, or, or the creation of the Sabbath day because we're walking around here with heavy hearts. But God gave them a specific commandment that was the most important, in my opinion. And he says, on this day, I don't want you to do anything else but remember the things I have done for you. And my question to you is, what has God done for you. And some of us come from, from nations, from lands of poverty, of sickness, of, of, of literal hell. Some of us are, are barely surviving in our lives, and we come to his seventh day, and God is not asking you to go back to what you have went to, but God is essentially telling you, remember what I just have brought you from. This week was midterms week, or last week was midterms week in college. Midterms are difficult, let me tell you that right now. Yeah, because you get the study review and, and you start thinking, man, like, okay, cool. If this is going to be on the test, then I got it. And then you get the actual test and you're like, none of this stuff was on the test. And then you start thinking, <laughs> have I really studied the way I was essentially studying from? And then you go throughout this week and then you're struggling and then you're getting in the books and you're doing everything you possibly can. And then when I came to the Sabbath day, I realized that I had no more stress to deal with. I realized I did not have to study this day. I realized I did not have to pick up a pencil and, and work through my notebook and do so many things so I can pass a midterm on this day. I realized all God wanted me to do was look at him and say, God, thank you for bringing me out of that pain, out of that misery. And, and Ellicott City Church, I, I want to thank you guys uh, for, for not just allowing me to be here because in this time that we're going to be together, I believe we're going to grow with one another. This makes sense. If you know me, I'm very passionate about not only youth, but just social matters. And, and I feel like God has brought me here because, uh, as you know, pastor was, he, he was our pastor in New Jersey, and then he became the youth director, and then he came here, and I believed, what other way does God want me to be here? My mom always told me this funny thing, and, and, she, and I have a best friend at home. His name is Mateos. Uh, whenever I would go sleep at his house, she would tell his mother, that's your son for tonight. So if he acts bad, you are allowed to hit him. So uh, Ellicott City SDA Church, I'm telling you guys, if I act bad, I'm now your son. You, you are allowed to hit me, as my mother would say. And on this Sabbath day, on this creation Sabbath that the world is celebrating, I just want to end my sermon by asking you, what has God delivered you from? What Egypt has he set you free from? Where were you captive before Christ saved your life? You created us, and most importantly, you died for us. Lord, we, we are your creation. And out of every day of the week, 
you looked at us on the sixth day and then you said it, it is very good. You looked at us with love, you looked at us with compassion and you said these right here, this is my prized masterpiece, God. And, and even though we sinned, you look at us the same way you did at the beginning of creation, Lord God. What, what a beautiful God, what reckless love you have for us, Lord God. And, and what we want to do, Lord, is we want to continue to bring you praise, the praise that you deserve, not the praise that we want to, to just merely give you, Lord God, but the praise that you all right, all heartedly, all knowingly, all powerfully deserve, Lord God. You are divine. You are our, our Lord, God. And Lord, if we do not know how to honor you the right way, Lord God, put in us the Holy Spirit so that we are able to sing and shout your name correctly, God. Lord, and if there are any iniquities or, or anything we want to do wrong against anybody or even against you in our hearts, Lord God, we ask that you remove it from us, Lord. And on this seventh Sabbath, holy day, Lord, re remove distractions, remove anything that forces us to forget about the one who redeemed us, Lord. Thank you, Father God, because we are yours and you are ours. Thank you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a happy Sabbath, everyone.